So today we're going to continue and hopefully conclude this uh, uh, responsive web design. And so just as a review, this is the page we were working on. Um, and let's look at it in the browser. This is the simple version that I had the context to show you the context. And we started playing with some of the media queries. So at this point, everything is responsive. <coughs> and you can, uh, let's get my context up here. This is, this, are, this is the media queries that we were playing with. Um, started making percentages out of everything. And I wanted to show you some more fun stuff in uh, SAS because you can make these functions. And notice how I have I turned all of my my uh, borders to a rounded corner. <coughs> and rounded corners are typically very hard to do in CSS because you have to support all of these different experimental versions of the border radius property that is in built into HTML, I mean CSS3, but nobody supports it completely correctly yet. So you have to have this dash moz dash, and they put their version of that property. So I have a WebKit version, a Mozilla version, a KHTML, a, an Opera version, a Microsoft version of all of these border radiuses. And so I can create a method that will allow me to put all of these in at the same time with only one call. <clears throat> so I created a mix in. This is how we would create a, a little method in SAS. And I called it rounded corners. And I passed in a couple of things. I passed in the color of the border that I want, the width of the border. And this, this lets me set a default. So if I don't pass anything in here, it's going to use five pixels as the default uh, width of the line. And then I have a rounding border radius of five pixels. And that's also a default. So then if I want to call it in my body, for instance, I want to have this. Uh, well, actually, what I did was I created two mix-ins. And this debug border calls my rounded borders border. So I, I use the debug just so that I can see where my stuff is. And I think that's really useful as you're laying things out just to see where the, the borders are of each element that you're playing with. So all I do is I call debug border with a color, and I pass that color on to some defaulted values of a, of a 10 pixel radius corner and a 3 pixel wide uh, line. So I, to call it, I just say at include, and then the name of the function that I want to call, which is debug border, which calls, again, rounded corners. So in the CSS that spits out for here, let's make sure it compiles. I also like to hit a return and let it compile. If I look at this, uh-oh, my watcher is disabled. Why is that? I can make the font bigger for you old people that need it bigger. There we go. So um, if I look at my body here, the, the Moz border radius is, is now selected and the WebKit border radius. So it puts in all of those pieces in every style that I want to uh, deal with. Now, one thing that I was also playing with lately is what does this, this look like? This output is from the SAS compiler, and it doesn't look as nice as it used to. Why is that? Right, I, I shrunk everything down, put it all on one line, took away probably 20% of the characters of the style sheet. And that's fine, because when I ship it up to the browser, I mean, to the server to display, I don't want all that extra data. That, that really is just for me to see, right? When I'm debugging things, I want it all indented right and all looking pretty. But in this case, I'm only ever going to look at my, my uh, SAS file. So this should be indented all correctly, and the output I want to be as compact as possible. And there are some additional uh, command line parameters you can pass to the compiler to tell it to compress the data. 
and I'll just show that real quick. It's in the properties. If I look at my file watcher and double click it, there is some uh, arguments that I pass to the command to the compiler. If I look at this, this is what was here before. It just had a dash dash no cache update and all this other stuff. I didn't change that. That came with the default. I added this. This is a dash dash style compact, space compact. That says now compile it in a compact mode. And they have, they have four or five different versions of how to uh, compile the data. If you want it all pretty, you want it indented, whatever you want, you can change that here. So. Um, the compact, I think, is the smallest. Uh, an obscure one. Um, let's let's go see. Obfuscate. There is for the JavaScript the uglifier that uh, makes that. Let's go look and see. SAS compact compile compressed. So there is a an output if I look for compressed. These are the different styles, nested, expanded, compact, and compressed. So compressed takes up the minimum amount of space possible. So we could do that. Let's change it to compressed instead of compact. Compressed. Say OK. Please set program to run. Um, I would put it at the beginning. I think it can go anywhere, but and what happened? It messed up somehow. Why is it doing that? That is the program to run. No. Worked on my Mac. <laughs> See, I, I didn't do anything and it still did that. I wonder if because I copied it from my Mac. Uh, well, let me pause. So let's try it again. So I'm going to delete my file watcher and add a new one. I think it got messed up when I copied my files from my Mac. So now it's got my batch. There we go. Okay. So the problem is I'm going to add uh, dash dash. I see I'm getting old. I can't remember what it is. Uh, uh, style option. Dash dash style. Style compact. Say okay. Did I? Oh. Compressed. All right, so now let's, yes, we want to add the watcher. Got a new watcher, so I'll hit return just to make it compile. Look at my context.css. It didn't, let's see, context. You know what I think I did was added SAS. Let's see, you know, SAS. CSS is the one I want. I don't really want this one. I'm not going to do SAS ever. Yeah, good stuff. 
All right, so now let's look at the style sheet. Doesn't look any different to me. So something is not working right for me. Isn't that great? All right, so I restarted uh, PHP Storm, and here's the compressed version. It puts it all on one line, takes out even the spaces between here, which is fine. That's it's about the smallest you can get it. Um, has only the white space necessary. So that's pretty compressed. You save a few bytes. And for mobile stuff, you want to save as many bytes as possible so that they don't have to download all this stuff. All right, so that was a, that was a cool little mix-in that you can create and just to show you an idea of creating some functions. Um, so we kind of uh, did this context one to death, so we're going to move on to um, finishing the, uh, the 85 uh, project that I was working on. So this is, this is the other one. So let's look at this guy. This is uh, the basic 85 template that I've been playing with uh, over the weekend. And this is, we left in, where we left off Thursday was changing the background color of that context one. So I added the background colors to this. So at every breakpoint, what controls those breakpoints again? Media queries, right? So at every breakpoint, I'm changing the background color of something. And I found this very useful as I'm debugging this to know that I've changed a breakpoint. So obviously, I'm not going to deploy it this way. This is stupid to have the background color change every time. But it lets me know, ah, there's my breakpoint. I can see, ah, yep, there's my breakpoint. I can see that right away. And so I'm in that orange breakpoint, and I can go look at the code for that. Yeah, it's it's just the way I left it. You can you can change that obviously, how they stretch and then they pop back and right, they're not right. It is yes. All right, so that's that's kind of annoying with those flashing colors there. But let's go and uh, walk through the changes that I've made. Uh, and we'll show you in my, let's get rid of all of this stuff. I'll show you in my SAS file what I've done. And how the steps I went through to change this. So this is what you should be doing for your assignment, basically, is walking through this. And the first thing we did was we changed the font and the code to reflect that. So everywhere uh, I had a font uh, size, I changed that to a, a percentage of an M, right? So because this, this is a problem, if I do this, we, I don't think we covered this really well last, last week. If I just do uh, 13 divided by 16 and put that in parentheses and type M, The, what happens is when it compiles this, it compiles OK, but it doesn't like it. So let's go look at the, the CSS that came out of this guy. And now that's a little tough to read, right? So let's go change this back so we can see it. Uh, let's change our file watcher back to take that out. So I'm not going to use the compressed at all. All right, so let's go recompile this, force a recompile. All right, so if I go back up to the top now and look at that one change, it makes the percentage correct, 0.8125, but it puts a space here. And that's non-standard, and the browsers ignore it. That space actually has to be out for that to work correctly. So in my SAS file, I don't have a space. See, that is no space here. but a byproduct of this uh, compilation is that it adds a space, which is annoying, right? So I have to change that. One way to do that, um, 
Right, I could put the M here. And SAS knows enough that it's going to do this calculation and leave the property as an M. So if I look at this, now it took the space out. So that's pretty good. That's a start. But I was finding that I had to do this so often that I created this little method here called PIX2M. And I pass in the, uh, tar the target size, which is 13. That's what I want it to be. And the context, which was the 16. That's the standard pixel size of 1M. And I wrote this little function up here. Actually found somebody on the internet that had done this. And because, uh, you know, why write your own when you can find one? And uh, this is uh, target divided by context. Remember our, our uh, mathematical formula. And then as a byproduct of that, that just takes a number, 13 divided by 16. And then to convert it into a, an M property, SAS says, oh, if I add a 0M to it, it will convert this, this value into M's. So that's a, that's a good way to do that. If you want to, I could have an M to picks as a different method. Yeah. So this is a great little function, except for if you're using it for picks to M, wouldn't the text be consistent? So wouldn't it make more sense Probably. for this aspect to take the context out and default it to 16? You could. I could just say uh, context of 16, make it default here, and then in my when I call it, I don't have to pass the 16. It's, it's just that it reminds me that it's it, that conversion. So it doesn't like that. Oh, because I have a, the last time it compiled it was when I hit the backspace. So let's recompile it again. And that works as well. So lots of ways you can do that. Uh, that makes sense. I can just leave that as a, as a default value. And then all the ones that I left a 16 on should still work as well. So I was having to do that in lots of places, the, the size. So I, I changed all of my places to this picks to M. So that's just so handy to be able to program style sheets again. I just love that. Then I created a default font because this was found in about four places in my style sheet. So to dry it up like a good Ruby programmer does, we make a, a variable for that. And I replaced that with my variable throughout my, my uh, style sheet as well. So I did that. I changed uh, the first one. Then the next thing was, well, I did this too, change my font size to pix. Then I'm going to go change my width properties from pixels to percentages. So everywhere I had a width, I'm going to change it to some percentage. So some of these were already percentages. Um, this one was 960. And it, so that was 960 before. So I chose 90%. And that's, that's the full width of my, of my static page. So whatever you want. That's whatever you want to choose there. Um, so we go on down. We found the one quarter was 225 pixels. And its parent was the 960 pixels, the fixed width. So I call this SAS method percentage, and that will spit out a percentage. Okay, And all of these were the same, 470, 715. That's what they were before, and I, and I want to convert it into a percentage. So we did all of these guys. All right. Um, those are my media queries. All right, so let's do go back. So we did that one. Then, I, then the next thing is to change the margins to percentages. And margins are changed based on the elements container. OK, so if I have a, uh, it's, it's a lot like the width here. You're based on its parent container. Because margins are outside the box of the element, right? Margins deal with things outside of itself. Padding deals with stuff inside of itself. So those are done differently. So any margin is done the same way as just the normal widths. 
So if I look for margin, if I look for margin in my style sheet here, margin of anything, uh, I want these to be percentages as well. And this one is, remember your litter bug property? Do you guys remember how to figure out what this, what this one is? Which one is this margin? It's turtle instead of litter bug. I thought it was litter bug. Turtle, right? T. You guys got me confused now. Trouble. Top left. No, top right. Bottom left. Right. Trouble. There we go. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> so this is top uh, right, bottom left. So in this case, I have this wrong. Uh, this should be. I only care about, whoa, I only care about things that are left and right. So this one would be changed here. Whoa, what happened? All right, so this is uh, top right, bottom, which I don't care about because that's uh, vertical. And then the left is going to change here. All right. So you you want to change it. for these that have all four. You only want to change the left and the right ones. Right. No, those you would just those are valid as having no margin. Yes. No. They don't have to be percentages. This doesn't make sense, right? Um, so we go through all of the margins. Here's a, uh, a right one, so I'd have to change this to a percentage of 20. Um, all right, so you're going to go through and change all of those margin percentages to something. And I have, I have some of these wrong. I'll have to go fix those, but not now. It doesn't matter. So the next thing is the padding. We're going to change padding based on percentages as well, but based on the element size itself, because padding deals with stuff inside the box. So the percentage is relative to its container, which is the, the element itself, right? So if I have a box, a nav box, and I have padding on that, I want the percentage to be from the width of the nav element. Does that make sense? It's the, you have to think of the padding. Whose parent is the padding? Well, whatever that element is itself. So you're going to look again for any paddings, and you're going to change those for percentages as well. So in this case, this image... Uh, I changed it to four out of 900 because its its parent was the entire width of the of the uh, cont of the content holder. I think it was so 900 was its original width. <clears throat> and some of these get a little more complicated, but it's all a percentage. See, I got these I got these backwards. Uh, that's why I outsource my design stuff. No, <laughs> you don't get that option. <laughs> all right. So you you continue on. I'm not going to change all of these, but the paddings are based on its parent. Uh, so this one this one is actually right. See, top and bottom, left and right. So I did get one of them right. Yay. So we're changing all the percentages. Um, those are top and bottom. It doesn't matter in this case uh, if you want the top and bottom to be a percentage as well. Uh, but usually we don't care about the the height between things unless they get really small. Yeah, it can because it's inside the container. Yeah. All right, so we go through the padding. Then the final thing, once we get all of that done, it's now responsive to a point. Uh, and then we add 
any of our media queries to change the overall layout. Pardon me? No. That's, uh, that's just how, this is one way to do responsive from a static site. I mean, there's lots of other ways, but that's, well, I, I went through this last week. I went through these. Yeah, I did. Go watch my videos again. All right, so let's go look at my page. All right, so here's my here's my page, and it's uh it's very responsive, and somewhat responsive, right? There's some issues, there's some issues with it, uh, but in one of the media queries, see, I have some problems uh, with it, with the images. They should be four across, but at some point in here, I change it to be two across. And then watch my nav link up here. Those are the only things that I really changed. The nav links here are going to change to be stacked on top of each other. And they probably should change somewhere back here instead. Or I move some margins so that I don't have that drop down, right? You gotta look at those details. But at this, this breakpoint, I've switched now and they're all on top of each other. You know, nice, I can hit those with a finger on a smaller tablet, things like that. I might even increase the height of these so that they're easier to hit with a finger than a mouse. I don't remember right here. I I must. I didn't I didn't make this pixel perfect yet. There's. Yeah, I was trying to center it. Uh, but at some point, see, the other thing is down here, I have two articles up here. And as we sh switch apart, I go to three or four. And this actually looked better on my Mac. Uh, I had four across. And then it goes to two across. And then when I get small enough now, it goes to one across. Yeah. So I've got I've got some more issues because I changed my my pattern stuff, but so Your broken. yeah, it it did, it did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how I taught you to do it. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, let's move it back to my false problems here because I. That was the problem. I designed everything else around these errors. <laughs> Welcome to our design style. Yeah. All right, so now let's look at this guy. And it should be a little better. All right. So there we go. Now I'm four cross in the articles and the images. I'm two across on both. See, that's better. Isn't that much better? That's what I spent my hours working on this weekend, just trying to get that to look right. And then when I shrink all the way down, um, I go up to one up here, and I probably would have gone to one up on the images as well. All right, so let's show you what I did. And those are all in my media queries. And I put up my media queries all the way at the bottom. So here's my media queries. I might even make that stand out more so I can find them. So I start modifying only those things that I need to change. So at my big width, I don't care. All I did was change my background color. So I knew I'm in my big 1460 width or 1440. Doesn't matter. Uh, then I started looking at the classes. And so what I did was, uh, as a general rule, at the size I'm looking at, I'm in the blue background size. So at this level, I started looking at things that didn't work. And it's easy in Chrome to just right click and inspect an element. And I can see, okay, this is an image. 
and it's contained in an LI and a UL and a figure, and I can start to see what do I need to change to make this shrink. And if I look at my figure, uh, let's see, what did I change? I changed my latest article, I changed the width down so that it forced my pictures to shrink. So in my latest article, my width turned to 80%. Before, it was like that. And I think I added a margin, too. So let's take all of those off. And my one quarter. And it tells you where those come from on the side, what, what line they're coming from. So you can just start playing with it here and say, OK, what happens if I change my width down to uh, 70%? OK, it, 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 that looks pretty good. So then I could copy that into its particular uh, style sheet in this particular media query. So that's all I was doing. I was looking at each element. And you're really kind of designing each page. You know, it's a whole new page. And all I'm doing is changing the stuff necessary to make it look good again. Yeah, I know. You can. Uh, you can do up and down arrow keys, which is cool. Right. That's that's why I same with Firebug. That works really good. So, so 70% is probably better. So I'll change this to 70% uh, instead. <laughs> I've had trouble saving it back to the file. I don't know why. So I don't ever do that, but it's a possibility. Another uh, new kind of a display thing that, that wasn't around just a couple of years ago with this is this inline block. And this, this changes things a lot nicer. This is, uh, fixes some problems. Um, if I look at the one quarter, let's go back and inspect my element, find my one quarter class, which is here. These are all the one quarter class. And if I took that off, well, it doesn't. Yeah. It was in. Yeah, it's adjusting my nav. Um, but sometimes the inline block lets, lets things adjust better, too. So. The idea was that at each level, I wanted to center these. So obviously, I have some problems at this level. It doesn't center as nicely. This one does. It's not so bad. So again, this is why I'm not a designer. It pays for me to outsource this stuff. Yeah, I don't. that's why I don't do the CSS class. I don't like it. All right, isn't that fun? So that's, that's all I did. I looked at each element. If I wanted this to change, I could inspect the element, see what class it was dealing with, see what classes were being applied to it, and then adding those to the different screen elements that I had. So as I got farther down, I had more and more things I had to change. So this is my smallest version. And there were more and more things I had to change. The, the nav I had to change. And some of them. Uh, I would copy from this one down to the lower level one because they, they were the same across both of those. So it made sense to have them both apply. Because what you're trying to do is override the main style sheet. We're changing the main style sheet. sheet. So some things you also might want to have to change to be uh, inherit, which is probably one of the only times I've used inherit. Uh, you can say the display or the float is going to be inherit, which means it's going to inherit its parent uh, class instead of this this one. To take off the idea of floating, I can change it to inherit. Yeah, floating is hard to deal with. So, all right, any questions on all of that? Wasn't that fun? So, that's uh, that's how I would do that. So you guys should be able to be done by Wednesday. Still fixing the site. <laughs>
So you're going to have to do things like, see how my text line drops down, my nav here drops down because it's going to interfere with this. So things like that I've had to fix. Um, obviously, this could use some more cleanup. But it's, uh, it's not bad. Not too bad. All right, any questions on any of that? All right, tomorrow we'll start talking about some frameworks, some responsive frameworks, uh, like Less and Twitter Bootstrap. So there you go.